After Hitler, Nazi Germany, the Holocaust of the Jews, the world said never again. What is happening in Tigray is no different. It is happening in real time. This is a genocide on the people of Tigray. America, it is 66 of the inter-country war waged on the northernmost region of Tigray. The Rwanda genocide took place in 100 days. 800,000 people massacred. In November, Ethiopia was officially placed on the genocide watch list as stage nine extermination. What does this say about us, our collective humanity, our world? Ignorance is no longer an excuse. You cannot say you are unaware because we are telling you we are complicit in the worst imaginable things happening to human beings, or will we come together to take a stand for Tigray and take a stand against ethnic and religious-based killings, period? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and I quote, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. If we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny, Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. All right, we are live. We're going to give a minute or so for our folks who join us. So I've got music on the background. Um, anyway, this is Cyber Power of Tigray from the West Coast, live from Portland, Oregon. We have uh, Abby joining us today, who is one of our uh, Tagaru diaspora. Um, let's see, I met Abby on our last protest in Portland. Actually, we had a great discussion and uh, what a small world is for Tagaru that I happen to know also some of her family member. I'm not gonna get detailed, but it was very small that I had an opportunity to uh, here you given like a wonderful speech at the rally in Portland and I approached you and I said, hey, I need to talk to you. And you're like, sure. And we just kicked it off. And then uh, that evening I found out that, you know, I actually been in communicating with one of your family member, which you already know who that is. And so uh, welcome to Cyber Power of Tigray. So if you don't mind, can you please tell them your name and uh, what you do and what um Maybe you, you know, to just be so simple with your fellow Tagaras to join us and to be able to discuss the crisis and the attack on Tigray and on Tagar people. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, that was a great introduction. Thank you. Um, my name is Abby Mohoni. I am currently in Portland, Oregon, and I am a public health student as well as a social media marketing consultant and blogger. Um, a little bit about of what um, I've been doing to facilitate, uh, to help uh, the movement um, is working on marketing social media as well, um, some film production efforts and um, just general individual act activism as well, um, setting out uh, Zoom meetings with friends who are not necessarily familiar with Tigray or Ethiopian history. Um, uh, just general uh, Americans, if you will. Um, so I'm really happy to be here. Like you said, we had a great, really fruitful conversation uh, at the last protest. So I'm really grateful for this space and this platform and hope to, um, you know, serve my people the best way that I can. Thank you. And I think in our conversation last time, you, you told me that you had recently visited uh, Ethiopia and Tigray, of course. Um, I would love to, um, while the audience are trickling in to join us here, um, I would love for you to share to the audience how you found it when you visited, because I know you were born here, but your heart is still there, like just like everyone else, like many young Tagaru, which is actually the discussion that we started here on Cyber Power of Tigray, English broadcasting, is that to cater and to ensure young people like you who by no fault of their own may not speak Tigrinya, but it doesn't mean they're not like proud of Tigray and the Tigray people because we are one and the unity you've seen hey. it all. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I can agree. Good job. No, hey, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> 
ከመላኹም ደቃዴ መበለወቅ አ ደሃኒየ ሲድረ ሰላም በተሰብ yeah i can understand a lot more than i can speak um but to your point to your question um yeah so i was fortunate enough to go to um to gray twice in 2019 and i'm going to try not to be emotional about it uh because it was the most uh just beautiful experience to see how like thriving mekale was in my view um but also just to be uh around all of the beauty of our people um in a really peaceful state um it was just it, it was a transformational uh a transformational trip and actually it changed me like I'm an artist at heart I didn't really I put off going to school you know I kind of went uh well I was in school um but I put off like following the conventional ladder um but it wasn't until I recently went back home and I was like okay I need to dedicate my time to public health because I feel like this is where I can serve the best um so that was um part of my plans when I got back home um but also a part of that with the Tagaro Professional Network we were planning a really great um excursion and endeavor to go back to Tagaro and facilitate um a diaspora homecoming trip if you will um so we had a lot of plans in the works all we were planning all throughout uh 2019 2020 um and we had a, like to build schools and to just build up to gray like as much as we possibly could um and then obviously the onset of we know escalate uh tensions were escalating but the onset of this war was just really devastating because um now we're at such a dire point where it's like the opposite um we have to rebuild back everything so um a little bit of background and that's where my heart's at you know i always had plans to go back to tagray and to live there to build a family there and to you know my first investments i planned to be there so um devastating on all levels but obviously um not as bad as our friends and family back there who are enduring the worst thank you that was a beautiful interaction um i'm going to like I'm going to try to keep it away as much as I can from being too emotional, too sensitive. Um I know we talked uh, you and I have sp- you know talked about this. Um it's hard. It's hard when uh, we all uh hear about it and see about it that innocent people are displaced all over Tigray to neighboring countries, children who are in immediate needs of humanitarian aid, Eritrean refugees over 100,000. uh have no access to the international community to help them survive i mean there's so many things happening but coming back before we go that far um it, i mean 2019 that was like such a recent um you know my first visit actually was in 1999 and i've gone back and forth and i have seen uh the first visit to uh, ethiopia actually in 1999 for me was i was embarrassed because addis ababa was like like it, it's like I've never seen like a city that is like in crappy place, like spot. I mean it's just I thought imagine my imagination was uh from Cali just going to Addis like I was like I'm going to Addis because everybody talks about Addis I thought it was like beautiful city and all clean and like high buildings and what not and I was like it was just embarrassing for me to be, to be honest with you but the culture the people throughout I was like this is wonderful. And then every time I went back I just saw how well it was developed. um there was negativity uh tension is that which you and I actually talked about before outside this uh, discussion how people have gone uh sometimes the tension that is generated creates so much of division divisiveness among us but now we have designated country in Ethiopia we have the the crisis in Tigray but it's not just in Tigray that that Ethiopia is falling apart Um do you have a general sense of what's happening in um in Ethiopia obviously and in Tigray and how the future how that's going to impact for Ethiopia? Sorry. Um <clears throat> I just have to back up a little bit. Um so the general sense in Ethiopia um in Tigray I know that it's uh very hardened 
at this point because when onset of declarations of war, um, we saw a lot of celebrating from, you know, all constituents. So it's, it's very worrisome at this point for us, you know, especially when we have these elders in our community, our parents, our grandparents who have been through, um, you know, it's just unbearable. Like uh, older generations, this is their third war. Um, so I don't blame them at all for having um, what they want to happen. Some have very strong feelings of uh, succession to get out of the country. Um, although logistically that would be like a longer term thing that's going to be like five to ten years regardless um, just based off of the way the constitution is set up as I know it. Um, but um, can't really blame them at this point anybody um, for wanting to have peace and safety and security um, in their indigenous lands. I think that's the fight of all indigenous people, right? To have uh, the ability to practice your language, your traditions, your customs um, without fear of ambush. Right, and the, the feeling of rejected from the very people who, the Tigray people who fought in every war to protect, keep Ethiopia intact and together. Now we've seen it designer, uh, being attacked from all corners, but the worst aspect of it, it's happening in Tigray from various part of the country came in to Tigray to eliminate an entire population. I mean, literally, you know, I don't want to like sound like everyone in Tigray is dead right now, but the, the agenda between the Eritrean troops, government of Eritrea, the dictator and the Ethiopian um, uh, dictator who failed to uphold the constitution, kind of what you're talking about, uh, instead of holding an election, which we've seen elections happen everywhere around the world, uh, in due time, including Uganda, just had like you know a few days ago. Uh, but he knew that politically, he couldn't win election, so he used that excuse, the pandemic COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. to delay that. And the Tigray people, right? The Tigray people hold out their election, and in return, what they got is a tack. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to me, like in a Western society, some like that, like. I mean, you and I have every right to free speech to elect our, you know, leaders that we choose so in our home state. We have certain liberties, yeah, that we can rely on because of our, you know, institutions being upheld to a certain point. And even now, like we're seeing a an attack on our most basic institutions. Um, the, you know, the the constitution of this country, like peaceful protest is allowed, and that's why we've been successful in. Um, raising our voices thus far. Um, and there's many types of privilege out there. There's the privilege of, uh, you know, the storming of the Capitol, right? Like you can, certain privileges can do that, but um, I don't want to draw any more uh, disheartened themes into our people. I just want to um, enliven them and empower them and to make sure that they know that um, as long as you're in this country, um, you do have certain things available to you, and we all have uh, a part to play in upholding those democratic institu institutions um, and human rights, basically. So in, every way that, in any way that I can facilitate that, I will be a part of that. Um, and Tigray, it, it, it's my heart. Like, I, I love my family. I love my friends. This needs to be on the agenda of uh, Joe Biden. Absolutely. Because um, I don't know if we want to get into the macro implications, um, but just from a public health, I'm a public health student, I'm not an expert, um, but just from a public health perspective, um, I quote this a lot, the U.S. Senior Study Group on Peace and Security in the Red Sea Arena, and I quote, sorry, I'm in my car right now because some family members are working inside so excuse the noise if there is some overlap um okay so in quotes as we cautioned in the study group's final report and recommendations released on october 29th the fragmentation of ethiopia would be the largest state collapse in modern history 
Ethiopia is five times the size of pre-war Syria by population, and its breakdown would lead to mass inter-ethnic and inter-religious conflict, a dangerous vulnerability to exploitation by extremists. An acceleration of illicit trafficking, <clears throat> including of arms in a humanitarian and security crisis at the crossroads of Africa and the Middle East on a scale that would overshadow any existing conflict in the region, including Yemen. As Ethiopia is currently the leading troop contributing country to the United Nations and the African Union peacekeeping missions in Sudan, South Sudan, and Somalia, and Somalia its collapse would be significantly impact the efforts by both to mitigate and resolve other conflicts in the Horn of Africa. So drawing on these, on these macro implications, the destabilization of the Horn of Africa um, and approaching that point of no return, I would really, I really just want the world and American, if they can't relate to on a personal level, just the macro implications, can we, um, can, can we uh, handle the impact of mass influx of refugees? Can we handle the impact of the ecological impacts? Um, are we equipped to meet the 2030 uh, uh, year standards of the UN for reaching all these goal goalposts? Um, so it's just a huge, it's a huge concern. And on the individual level, people are dying. They're being hacked to death. Like if this doesn't matter to people, what is, you know, what are we doing? Who are we as people? What is humanity? And that's that's often the question. And when I'm upset, um, I appreciate people, you know, their perspective. But I keep saying this, and I keep talking about Ethiopians on the diaspora and Ethiopians at home. Uh, it was welcoming news for me to hear that just a few days ago, the uh, the Oromo, which makes up the large population in Ethiopia, um, actually raise enough money to buy like. Uh, you know, uh, food and, you know, went to Mekele and distributed to Tigray people. And one of the, uh, the, uh, the guy who was participant from the Oromia region say, you know, look, I understand, you know, that we have people in Oromia that are going hungry also, that there is problem, we have our own problem in Oromo, in Oromia. But as, a, as an Oromo, I care about the people of Tigray because they mm -hmm. are, at worst as we speak and so you have that's that kind of heart and i you know honestly from that. that's, know yeah, that. and that's what, why can't why can't we see so for those who are getting like you know upset with me like i point out with them i'm calling out on the maharas because they've been the instigators they meaning like uh collectively the the amhara militia the amhara elite however we want to categorize them not you but i'm just saying we meaning like as those of us who are upset I, about it i hear you um, where are they? Why, why aren't they coming as just humanity, like from human perspective? The Oromos don't even have borders with Tigray. Mm -hmm. But if they can cross like, you know, hundreds of miles to just do he the right thing, which is to help. And Eritreans, by the way, I have, I'm going to have a young man tonight that's going to go on this show. He just got back from, from Tigray. Mm -hmm. He's talking how the Eritrean soldiers in Tigray saying, we don't want to kill you, but we are ordered to do so. We don't want to loot your city, but we don't want so. But we have an omission. Can we talk? Can we expand on that a little bit too? Sure. Oh, like, absolutely. Talk about war and like the um, the absolute just horrific circumstances it brings on human beings. Like there's young boys, young boys who are they have no choice. They have to fight against their own people. They are the sheer numbers of troops that are invading this small region, there's no justification. There is no law enforcement operation that takes two, okay, let, let me just be conservative with this estimate. 200, let's say 250,000 um, Eritrean troops. Let's say there's, you know, we know there's militias involved. Um, we have to put that at like 300,000 plus you know, just in Mekele alone, there's other, um, there's, there's so much happening, but I just keep thinking of like my younger cousins, my boy cousins and <clears throat> the serial rape that's going on, like the worst possible human, uh, things that are happening to humanity. And 
it, it just sickens me that people have a choice to care about it or not, if it makes enough headlines. And like all of Africa is hurting. If we want to put it on the macro, macro scale, um, Nigeria and SARS, Uganda, what you just mentioned, um, I believe there was a, a pop, Bobby, um, a popular artist who had to call attention to this um, and they were chasing him out of his home. Uh, like Africa's hurting right now, definitely. And we need to be with our people our indigenous folk and, you know, build community. There's a lot, there's a lot of hurt. And, and the displacement and now the ethnic, the ethnic targets is another um, um, sad story that's continuously happening. Uh, the Ethiopian dictator who, again, is miscalculated the war that he declared on the Tigray people mm -hmm. is now unable to defeat the fight on the bottom ground. The Tigray leadership we knew that leads the Tigray Defense Forces left Makale to avoid massacre of half a million people. Uh, he His army, including the Eritreans, combined into the Tigray over 500,000. Mm -hmm. uh, most Maybe of them the are crazy. It's crazy. almost amazing. Like if it wasn't so tragic, it would be laughable because you have how many troops, how many military coming in for a population so small, the basically the smallest de demographic within, um, you know, Ethiopia, the smallest population. And we don't even know those numbers because it's the, I believe the last consensus, uh, the last census was uh, 2007. Like even in and of itself, oh, yeah. how do you expect to facilitate democracy if you don't even have a right count on the population? Like right. that, that just seems like, that's just gr like number one, you have to have, you have to know who's in the country, who's who are you representing on a political, socio-political scale, right? Um, so that that's another thing. I it's so convoluted, but um, yeah, our but people dictators are don't think that way. Starved to death right now. That's right, what we exactly. understand. Like our people are literally being starved to death. There's so many people who have not heard from their families at all. I think of my um, my auntie in Adigrat, who is like a um, uh, she, she's a nurse, but also like a, a top position at one of the hospitals. And I've not been able to get a hold of her thinking about how, uh, in Mekale, all across the region of Sagrai, they don't have gloves. They don't have the basic necessities to care for people. Um, thinking about doing like amputations and all of these different things that they have to perform without basic, um, anesthesia or medicine and our monuments are being looted uh factories are being looted um everything the universities small businesses homes um the ethnic profiling outside of tigray so yeah there's there's a lot to cover and you know um the guest that i'm gonna have tonight actually some of the stuff that you describe is what he's been um witnessing uh, we got to try to avoid from uh, given a specific location to avoid retaliation, obviously, for family members back home. But uh, some of the story that's coming out, uh, even Eritreans in the diaspora who have family within the military in Tigray right now, uh, the Eritrean military are taking photos of what's happening. Um, you know, they are rounding up like villagers, young men from villages throughout Tigray, whenever the Eritreans are able to loot like the pharmaceutical uh, factory, for example, in Adigrat, was like looted. And those who were told to come and load up the Eritrean uh, vehicles, that when they finished loading, they took them outside the city and then they massacred them all. And this, you know, this is the kind of thing that we've seen, um, but at the same time, they're not able to win the battlefield fight, which is when you when you're at war, there's like collateral damage. But this is not collateral damage. This is like a, a, a direct a, attack on ethnicity, which is kind of what you talked about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do we overcome how, the younger generation? How, how are we supposed to come together 
to understand the complicity of politic, but at the same time to live side by side while regions in Ethiopia now have to figure out for self-determination and whatever else that comes. Uh, I gave up hope to talk about Ethiopia. I'm, I'm done, but I don't wanna, that's, that's my personal opinion. But from your perspective, how, how, how are we supposed to, even the, the diasporas from certain ethnic group, they're hardcore, they're still bashing and talking that calling us junta, junto. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's an insult, basically, someone who betrays their country, their people, which actually is Abiy Ahmed and Isaias and the followers are the one betraying their country uh, as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for that. I hear you. I definitely hear you. And I, I validate your experience, your lived experience, right? Like how you feel is valid. How anybody feels is valid. I have to be a little bit careful uh, speaking from the diasporic um, perspective. Um, but what I do know is that um, we need a lot of empathy in order to heal. We need to be able to really revolutionize the theory of understanding, re revolutionize um, what it means to be um, ourselves, our identity in first generation, because we have a lot of different uh, obstacles, I guess, being first generation than our parents did, immigrating from directly immigrating. So I'm first generation, right? So I've lived in a different world. Um, um, but I, I, I don't think that we have like a lot of obstacles in terms of where we stand like what we want is our people to be safe right like we right. are fighting for that first and foremost what we need to be doing is using our voice to uh speak for our family members that can't speak for themselves um in doing so in a wise way that doesn't mean that we have all the answers it doesn't mean that we're the perfect advocates but we need to use our privileges wisely and be able to uh speak for them um, to make this come to a halt. So I think there's a lot of different ways that people can be involved. That doesn't necessarily mean that you, uh, you know, have a certain title or anything, but uh, just standing up for human rights, our friends and families, they need us right now. So as long as we continue on, we participate in our uh, social media, uh, Twitter campaigns, we'll be fine. What we will, so we participate in, holding our elected leaders accountable, we will make progress. Making sure that we understand uh, the ICC and the R2P, what they can actually do, um, managing our expectations of that, I think that will serve us really well. Um, understanding the global perspective of uh, the genocides happening worldwide, Nobody, why nobody is speaking about, out about Yemen, why nobody is speaking out about um, uh, Myanmar, the different genocides that are taking place, we can learn a lot from them. We can learn a lot from those movements about human rights because we're we're at a pivotal pivotal time um, to uh, to serve a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of atrocity going on, especially in Tigray. And and I think you know to your point, um, what we're doing in uh, social media, what we're doing, airing stories like we're discussing about right now, uh, communicating with one another. I think I have, I am so humbled to meet so many uh, Tagaru and supporter of Tigray that are rising up and saying, look, this is wrong. We can't continue. I mean, this is, I mean, folks like the, you know, this is like ongoing for two and a half months. People are literally dying of basic from literally from starving to death. Like if it like I can't even comprehend, and that's why I like I don't want to seem too like business formal. I don't even know how I'm coming off right now. But what is circling through my mind every single day is like children. Children being starved to death, not having access to anything. This is day 73, 74, 70 plus. Um yeah. so 
anybody watching this, if whether you identify as um, Habisha, Ethiopian, American, um, Turkish, you're from Brazil, you're you, wherever you are in the world, like this matters. This is such an ancient legacy. This, these are such kind, loving people that do not deserve this at all. And if we are ever to uphold the notion never again from the Holocaust in the, the, the um, Nazi Germany, you know, it takes collective humanity to be able to, it's not just on select individuals from the UN to uphold this. We as a collective humanity have to say, this is wrong across the board you know, this disgrace against human rights and these um, atrocities that are taking place, we're not going to stand for it anywhere because we understand, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, um, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And we have to take heed because that's the truth. We, it is the truth. And, uh, and you know, and, and of course, the ma you know, the, sadly, the massacre continues. Uh, which shifts, you know, I want to shift the subject now real quick to what's happening to Ethiopia, for example. The I just read um, yesterday that the European Union just suspended 107 million uh, worth of U.S. dollar aids that Ethiopia uh, would have received because of the war, which goes back to what you were talking about earlier, uh, whether or not we are making a difference in the diaspora. And I want our listeners to know that, yes, we are. And we yeah. actually have a campaign going on right now. Twitter campaign started today. So young Tagaru, Tigray lovers, Tigray followers who yeah. care about humanity, who speaking yeah, about justice. Group. Yep. I mean, tweet. Go, go on Twitter. Join please. in. The Twitter campaigns, that's where you will be heard. That's where you will be heard. And we have a lot of different metrics to... Um, figure that out in terms of marketing, whether it be Google Analytics or there, there's so many things that we can um, measure our campaigns, but just stay united and build community within Absolutely. ourselves. That's what I like really want to hone in. Like now is not the time to like gatekeep any information. If there's any information from like an elder perspective that you can trickle down onto the younger folks, do that now, do that now. Please make sure that uh, our youth uh, have a full picture, even if it's hard. Um, because in reality, a lot of our family members, a lot of, uh, th they're still dealing with the past things and they've excelled. Like, I'm so proud of them. They've excelled like within this crazy circumstance of America and meritocracy and they've navigated it all as immigrants. Um, um, but there is a really, really heavy plight on our elders to, to go through this trauma again. Um, so, any information you can e extract out of uh, our elders, um, now is the time to do it. It's so important to understand um, what has happened in the past. And we have a great idea now, it's two months, you know, we've been faced with it, so we know. Right. Um, but just for anybody tuning in, even younger generations, you know, there's a way to give correct information to younger um, kids, you know, this is where we come from, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, and I, I just want to be a part of the solution. I want to uh, make that clear. I want to be a part of what will help. And I think, you know, thank you. Um, I think what's really amazing when you touch base about the um, our generation, older generation, is that what I've seen that I've never seen in my lifetime is a unity and the willingness uh, from every Tagaru young and old and and whatever age that i yeah, spoke one with one telecommunications company um that's the reason why our calls are surveilled why we can't get um all of the information um accurately anyway so uh just to bring it back to the point um he's uh facebook made deal with uh in ethiopia which uh is a program called free basics free basic basically is the pre-download of Facebook app in any smartphone distributed in Ethiopia entire, in, in its entirety. So um, basically, Facebook functions as, um, as the internet for people. It's free to access Facebook, but it, it costs money to access um, the internet. And why this is so important is because, um, you know, it's a relatively uh, 
poorer population, if they get hands on a, if anybody has hands on a, a, a smartphone, it'll come with it. But Facebook is a, um, it's not a free information environment. It has algorithms. Um, and this will be a whole other discussion of where like that, where that really gets dangerous. But what people need to understand is, um, Number one, like it's not a free information environment. Facebook has very structured algorithms. And two, um, there's only one language that caters to um, Facebook right now, which is Amharic. So there's a lot of marginalized folks who aren't being, don't have a voice on the platform. And this is like people from like experts, Tristan Harris, uh, the creators of Instagram, Google, you know, they're backing this. They're saying this is problematic. Um, these um, institutions, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, all of these things that were initiated, even Seattle um, initiated in um, Silicon Valley, most of the programmers are like white males, right? There's not a lot of diversity. There's not a lot of problem solving around like, oh, what happens when we go into a country that has totally different um, values, um, totally different language, totally different culture, um, different government? Uh, how can the government uh, manipulate those things to feed propaganda, so on and so forth? So they've been warning for a while that this is, um, you know, tech outsiders have been warning for a while. So just encourage people to um, check out Tristan Harris as well. So I'm sure that, you know, that is um, great information. I don't disagree with any of the information that you're sharing with the audience. I am going to keep my mindset where I'm going to say, we're going to exactly what you share. We're going to make the great of the state of Tigray. It's going to become uh, one of the amazing place and planet that what, a lot of these young people that I, you know, again, yeah, I've been talking right with. There. Trust me, I'm right, right there. So, so that's, that's, where that's what I'm they're telling me. The property, that's where I will be. Trust me. So, so rebuild Tigray. So, so I want the audience to understand that the crisis, which I want us to touch bases in a, in a couple minutes here, is that we have just in Mekali alone, we have over 700 women, young girls, pregnant women have been raped. Uh, it is violent. Uh, in Aksum, we had over 750 people from one church massacred. Uh, we have one of the well-known um, uh, historical site churches called Devradamo was bombed just in the last few days. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, but I want to stay on that topic for a second, actually. So a lot of these young Tagaru, what now they are processing and realizing is that um, you don't have to be fighting on the, on the battleground to help Tigray. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing that I've been kind of, you know, I think you you're like way ahead of me. So you already explained everything. But the thing that I would add to is that when I talk with them, I'm like, look, yes, I would love to do the same thing. Trust me, I'm emotional. I'm hurt. I'm angry. I'm all of those things. But what I'm doing is I'm using that energy wisely. I am, you know, I'm not going to be depressed. I refuse to be defeated by evil. So instead. But it's OK I, to process your emotions at the same time. Would you agree? Right. You know, 100%. you have one person where you're like, you can let it all out and just be like, oh my God, this is what I'm feeling. Because that we need to normalize that too. You know, this is a lot. People yeah. have heard from their families in so long. Like there's so much. We need to have that space, you know? Two and a half months. I mean, imagine for two and a half months, many of us have not heard anything from our family members. And it's it's that's the unknown uh, aspect of it. But what's beautiful at the same time is that we're going to get it through. We're going to make it because the, for Tagaru, for Tigray, this is not the first time it's been tested. We've gone through this before. What's sad this time around, though, is Tigray leadership, Tigray people lost over 60,000 young men and women to bring democracy, to put this guy in power, who's turned turn his back on them. That's a sad reality. But we cannot dwell on that. And say what if and what if not. So what we, what well, the only thing that should give us uh, hope right now is God's plan. You know, if you have faith, hold on to that because God's calendar is so much more articulate than we could ever imagine. And I, that's so easy for me to say uh, in diaspora, safe, fighting uh, from this perspective. 
Um, but I just have to instill that integrity in our people too, that morale, that faith, um, that God is with us at all times. He never leaves. God is always with us. Um, and just know that anything that you're doing, it makes God smile. It makes God smile so much. The the fact that you're speaking out for your family, and I'm just going to reiterate um, something that I heard Maaza say um, from Humans of uh, Tigray Live. Like, it's not about our individual safety. It's about our collective existence. It really is at this point. Um, and I just hope that uh, we can lean on each other in that. It's our collective existence. So let's find more ways to build community. Let's find more ways to be closer. Let's find more ways to, uh, to figure out what is it. What, what are the best ways that we can um, combat this evil? Because right now we're we're David and Goliath. Like we really are. We are that small uh, shepherd. We are. We have this pebble and we're slinging it back. So let's figure out the right pain point so that just. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, we we have we have slightly delay on audio for you, but I think uh, I I pretty much heard um, uh, the point that you've been making. Uh, we definitely are having a little bit delay on your um, sound system, and then your sometimes your it's freezing up on you. But um, I think my apologies. I'm so sorry. I that's a, that's okay. There, it's yeah, you coming through fine. It's just there's occasionally it like it frees up your uh but I think you know, um having faith, I you know, it's like I feel like it's a wonderful like reminder and therapy for those in the diaspora who are doing so much to stand against genocide in Tigray, to fight the injustice abroad. Uh and I think while it is two and a half months seems like you know, long time, which it is long time. While many people also feel like helpless and hopeless, I think we are doing tremendously good work to end this violence once and for all. We know that other there are other actors now involved in this crisis. We can talk about the Roma region, the uh, Beishangul region. Now they have the Sudanese border issue. But I think I think with our diaspora, what I want to do. Hopefully we can get your audio back a um, little bit um, and connectivity wise. But what I want to say to the young diaspora is just listen to what, you know, what Abby's saying, have faith, don't give up, be strong. And those of you who are eager to go back, yes, we all will go back to rebuild Tigray. Tigray is going to need us, not just for one month, not just for one year, not just for 10 years, for many, many years to come. We are going to go back. We are going to rebuild Tigray far beyond than it was. And I guarantee it, many Eritreans in the diaspora are also humble to go back and help rebuild Tigray because they've been embarrassed by the action. <laughs> there you go. Are we here? Okay, You're, uh, can, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, there. Continue yeah, on. There you you're talking about Eritreans and the diaspora, everything. Yeah. So, you know, so the, I would just go off of what you say to have faith and to not lose sight of like, you know, the, what we're doing, the uh, Twitter campaign, the networking with not just Tagar, but expanding our network with our um, uh, fellow Eritreans and the Romo who are right. actually coming forward to help us is that, I mean, this, I've never, you know, actually, to be honest with you, I never thought that the Romas will go to the extent to lend hands to Tagaro. So to me, there's hope. There's hope really that- Can I that say something also? Oh, you just yeah. me. Um, like when I went to, um, just I'm talking about my last recent trip. Um, I've been in Oromo regions. I've been in Amhara regions. Uh, I don't want to get too specific. But I broke bread with the people. Like nobody can tell me the, the rural people you know, in those areas are not beautiful people. And they it, like, they don't have any power to say what happens or what, what doesn't, you know, they have no power to say, uh, I wish my family uh, was not killed right now. Um, but all I know is the, the beauty of those people that took me in and like did not give any, uh, they, they don't care where I come from. 
you know, they're not asking me, they're not profiling me. Um, so that's what also what I try to keep in my heart too. I'm not speaking about any other, um, uh, anybody's experience, but I'm just trying to like keep the humanity alive in our, uh, in our efforts. Right. Because I, I don't know, like th this is just something that you said, like really sparked that to me. Like I've, uh, I've broke bread with, uh, different Ormo communities and even in uh, uh, Lalibela, not to say that I like I'm best friends with everybody, but um, yeah, there's there's a lot of potential, I will say. There's a lot of people who have been personally reaching out to me. They're like, oh my God, like, I don't know how to even go about this. Mind you, they're in the country of state-sponsored violence day to day. Um, um, you know, I'm hearing a lot of reports of people who do want to help and be in solidarity with Tigrayans, but there's not really a there's not really a community for that. I feel like in the diaspora, but it's really ironic because we have the opportunity to build that, um, to facilitate that. So I just hope that we continue on that path, but also not um, deter anybody else's uh, uh, any anybody else's speech. Like, I am here for my family, I'm here for my friends, I'm here for humanity, you know? Like, I hope that people know that. Like, m I love my family, I love my friends. Like, I, I don't want this to be happening to anybody. So we're still having a pretty major audio issue, unfortunately. Um, we're gonna see if we can reconnect in a, in a little bit, uh, it's completely now uh, freezing you up. Oh no! I know. Oh. Okay, folks. So we're gonna apologize for the little bit delays that we're having, but uh, we're having a great discussion on how to um, bring together the Tagars and the diaspora and how we're gonna rebuild Tigray. There you go. You're back. I'm okay. so sorry. Did you guys hear anything that I said before? Yeah, it was. It, it, I heard no. I heard you. Uh, it was just uh, it kept freezing to your face. And then, uh, Continue on. I'm sorry. That's Go okay. Ahead. That's okay. Uh, that's what I want to hear, please. And it was it was great discussion. So I was just going off of what you what you were pointing out that the unity. Um, I think you know. Um, I um, I'm hopeful that a lot of the young Tagaru who are already like ready to go back uh, to rebuild Tigray. Um, I have no doubt that is, you know, we are ready uh, mm -hmm. for those. 100%. Uh, when the time comes, we're ready. We're going back. 100%. That's right. That's right. And so, and thank you to Sudan, obviously, who uh, is every time Tigray is in crisis, every time Tagaras are in needs of help, Sudan has always opened its door. So let's keep in mind also, we have a, we have a great neighbor, even internally, when we have this much of like div divisiveness, this much of division, um, I'm pleased to hear that, you know, a lot of your friends are reaching out to you. I think for me, my struggle continuously is that all the Amhara friends that I thought they were good friends to me, uh, not only did they not reach out to me, but they actually were bashing about Tigray and my people behind my back until I found out from some of our mutual friends, which I have decided to defriend each and every one of them because See, I, that's what makes me so angry. Because I, you're not alone in that. A lot of people have heard the same things, like their coworkers, not even yeah. just saying anything. Just everybody so, knows it's good. Yeah, I'm so, so sorry. Like, that's, yeah. So that's the, for me, you know, I can no longer like live pretending that somehow, yes, you know, I think what's sad is that what you mentioned earlier, like I've been in Gwandar, I've been in Lalibela, I've been throughout Ethiopia and the Oromia region. Uh, yes, I've never, you know, felt like outside the norm. Uh, and that's kind of what, to be honest with you, how the political uh, geopolitic in Ethiopia is hijacked is that the majority of the population in Ethiopia have nothing to do with the war. They have no idea even what's happening. And you have a... Rural a, populations. Like, this yeah. is the sickening part of it. It's rural people who it's like, they need they need a, 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 a framework in a country. They need the stepping stone. They need that, like, they're... It, it just makes me so angry that it's farmers. It's poor people that are bearing the brunt of the war and then they're expected to fight in the war. 
Um, they're expected to uh, just run to the borders of Sudan, just let all of their goats, all of their cattle, all of their farm necessities be completely slaughtered. Like, I hate that. I hate that, especially going back to Mahoney, being blessed by farmers uh, one by one, like receiving so much love from them and really understanding them. And just the church, like everything, it's it's really traumatic. Like I can't um, really explain the love of the people and just how beautiful people of the Gray are. Um, it's it's really disheartening. I can't like um, I can't allow myself to like fully fully understand. Like it's just they're being slaughtered. It's an extermination plot, and I'm you know we need to continue. Um, it, uh, man, um, I think, um, to, to see this many young Tagaro rising up, um, Alula Solomon was on the show earlier speaking in Tigrinya and he was talking about how, you know, we can no longer look back. We can no longer ignore those who rejected us in our own country as Tagaro based on our ethnicity, those who are attacking our historical sites, churches and mosques you know kind of what you're talking about also like you know you know eating like cattles and cows and and uh, uh um like livestock for farmers throughout uh, tigray those are like you know the most angry the most peaceful people who do the most labor every day to bring like fruit to their home right and so and so and to know that our our trend troops know only what they're doing and they're telling our people Oh, you know, it's a mission that we are sent to do. We have no choice because if they are not following the mission, the order from Isaias Afork and the generals who are uh, determined to eradicate Tagaru, yeah, they themselves are actually facing like death. And that to me is like how cold, how heartless does a person has to be for Ethiopia, on the other hand, by the way, they're struggling now. They can't even get Eritrean troops out of out of Tigray because now Eritrean troops are telling the the federal troops in Tigray, "Hey, we help you to get to Mekale. With without us, you will never get any any anywhere anywhere." So that you're not telling us what to do. I mean, internally now, you're having Eritrean troops and the Amhara. I mean, the Amhara and the federal troops fighting among each other, basically saying, "You don't get to tell us what to do now." So talk about the mess that Abiy Ahmed has if created. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If I could interject a little bit, um, just with the with the International Criminal Court uh, aspect in the R2P, the right to protect um, the UN mission, um, I want to make sure that we understand what that means, but also what it means to inspire uh, social change and political will within our movements. Um, so if everybody who has access, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, it's still freezing you up, but your voice is coming out. Okay. But your face is, uh, uh kind of mostly froze okay. out. It's okay. Okay. Sorry. Right. Um, so I just want to, I know that we, our time is limited and uh, we're having some difficulties, especially on my face, it seems like. So I just want to direct everybody to Linktree dash i stand with tigray um this is going to be the best resource for uh us right now at this point um how we can do individual activism how we can join in collective activism and how we can point to our friends and family who are americans who may not even know where tigray is in ethiopia or uh you know anybody basically anybody action items so um head over to the top on the list omna tigray um there you're going to find um basically a landing page spelling it out for you um the mission the victims of war so on and so forth the second down you will see um stand with tigray tweet templates so what we're uh, facilitating now is the 100 days of uh, Biden's administration. And what we really want him to cue on is like to uphold our democratic, uh, uh, our institutions, right? Like we want to 
make sure the world knows that America is against um, atrocities on a human rights level. And for the last four years, we have not been able to like say that. We, ha we haven't because we've had so many uh, issues in our own country on a racial level. Um, so yeah, I just wanna reiterate, anybody who is willing to help and looking to help, Linktree dash, I stand with Tigray, you will find a number of action items there where you can be um, involved in. Um, and then New Media Social Change is also my Instagram profile, uh, as well as my URL. Very I'm good. Just like that uh, real quick before there's any more delays or anything like that. And I hope this has been a fruitful conversation. I'm sorry. I like. I don't know if this has been particularly fruitful for the viewers, but I'm so happy to share this space with you. I really, really am. Thank you for inviting me in. Absolutely, yeah. I'm sorry that we're having uh, the audio difficulty, but uh, it, it's been really fruitful and helpful. A lot of people actually, in fact, I've, I've seen a few people asking you to repeat that again because I don't think they wrote it down. So I'm gonna give you uh, an opportunity. Don't repeat to... anything, just let me know. Let me know how I can help. Yep, so um, if you can, um, in your closing statement, if you could just uh, say it one more time, that way uh, the folks who might not got it, they will get it. And then if you can, um, when we're done, you can message me and then I'm gonna air it again tonight so I can talk about it again tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so my closing statement was just directing folks on to how we can stay um, the, uh, in a community, how we can um, help our efforts back home. So direct these resources to yourselves, your family, to your friends, anybody can do this. So it's Linktree dash I stand with Tigray. And there you will find, um, so the first we have Omna Tigray advoc advocacy and resources. There you will find mission statements, what has been going on, kind of like the historical background. It's an international group um, devoted to that. Um, and then second down, you'll find Stand With the Guide tweet templates. This is super easy. When you are joining our campaign, all you have to do is literally click the box, scroll down, and then you, you'll see um, the date. You just search for the date. Uh, Twitter campaigns, the date, and then you can press uh, tweet if you're signed in to either your uh, uh, your web browser or the Twitter app. It'll take you exactly there. Um, or you can just copy and paste. All you have to do is copy and paste, post, copy and paste, post, copy and paste, post. That's all we're asking you to do. It's just a way to leverage our voice um, uh, to make sure that our narratives are being uh, fully represented. Third down, you'll see I stand with the grad. has a lot of information on that phone banking. This is what um, would be so helpful for anybody to get involved. If you have any friend at all uh, interested in being involved in the efforts, this is what they need to do. It's prescripted, right? So they will call their representatives and they will give um, uh and then we have a whole script laid out for you. And it's just basically asking, uh, d displaying, like, what are the, what do we want for it to grow and what are the issues? Um, so it's basically, it's hardly any work that you have to do. Just click the button and you'll see there's many, many buttons. There's many ways to get involved. So don't be discouraged. You don't have to be um, to grow away. You don't have to be from to grow. You don't have to be anything to sign up for human rights. You can join us. You can, um, you can be whoever you are, just just stand for human rights. You know, this matters. This is ancient history. This is UNESCO sites. People should care about this, you know, for so many reasons. So there's so many ways to get involved. I just hope that um, Americans really uh, understand that the threats to democracy are not just at home, it's all over the world. And we have an obligation, we have a stern, stern obligation and a responsibility to uphold our institutions here. So I hope that we continue to do that. Absolutely. And at the end, you said it, like, I mean, this is all about humanity. Forget about the politic of it, but think about from hum humanitarian perspective. That's what we're talking about. 4.6 million people in Tigray, 
of which about two and a half million are children in needs of basic things such as water and food and clothing. I mean, just medicine. I mean, you know, that is just a human right. We can, mm-hmm. we can, we can have political differences. Even, you know, even right. you and I can have a different. We have a different views and whatnot. But that mm-hmm. should not be the, the, you know, the, the focus here is there is genocide happening in Tigray. There are people in needs of desperate needs of help. We need the UN to step in to help the people who do not deserve to be displaced, to be massacred. The world needs to, uh, to w- pay attention more. The war currently that's happening in Tigray should not be waged against civilians. And I wish that we had a better audio communication, but I'm gonna have to bring you back another time because I had a few other topics that I was gonna cover uh, with the audio quality. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to um, do uh, uh, end it here, but um, I do want you uh, to, uh, uh, so typically before I go on my own closing statement, I typically would say it in English and Tigrinya. So if you would like to say anything to the diaspora, but also to Tagaros back at home, in English, uh, to Green, if you want to say so, anything that you want to say, you are welcome to do uh, a final uh, point. Thank you. Um, I do have, wow, I don't even know if this is um, something that I was really, you know, I'm, I'm just leave it at this. Um, you know, just be be hopeful be hopeful for our people be be hopeful do not lose any grain of morale do not let anybody tell you that you do not have a right to speak out against uh the ugliness that is happening don't be gaslit um just don't let any ugliness come to you this now is the time to embrace truth and love and um, I wish healing for all of our all of our people. Um, yeah, and I hope that I, I can continue to serve our people the best. That's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to do anything other than um, make sure that our traditions survive on. Um, I love you all. I love my people so much. I love all of us so much. I want us all to um, prosper and not to be in this hurt anymore. So. Reach out to me. And you're not freezing up anymore. Am I good? (laughs) You guys. You're not freezing up anymore. (laughs) Okay. Well, I love you all. That's basically all I'm saying. I'm sorry we had so many technical difficulties. That's all right. Um, That's all right. We got the point across. But I love you all so much. Sagrai. Um, I would sing, I would do my little Ashenda poem right now that I had, uh, but I don't want to take up too much. That, that'll that be a different time. I have a lot of poems that I want to uh, Go ahead. display for. A- Go ahead. Should I? Do you guys want to yeah. hear my Ashenda poem? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> okay, let me find it. Hold on. Okay. Um. I was so excited to share this with everybody. Oh, yeah, it was go my, ahead. It was I'm my first play, one. I'm going to play the me, music while you find it. <laughs> this is the best That's day okay. of my life. Okay. When you read it, let me know. <laughs> Ready to go? Hold on one second, one second. You're good. We'll, we'll keep them entertained.
I swear it's uh gotcha. you're good you're good um i mean i think you know it could be for another time too but it was a really yeah. beautiful ashenda poem yeah I mean, think about it i've never like i've never seen this many like tagaru like just like young tagaru born in america it's Canada, amazing Oakland. honestly i have sisters in australia i got sisters in berlin brothers in denmark like we all have so much family like this you're exactly what you said this is uh a, a, a really it's a blessing in disguise because we're more yeah. communicative and we're more collaborative than ever that's right that's right so we're gonna to continue to spread yeah. the love for our like young Tagaru, have, like and we got we're gonna best friends for these last two months. Yep, sorry, we had a little audio delay, so I talked over you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, but now your audio is okay. So um, it's been um, a really amazing discussion. If you want to repeat that link that you were talking about earlier, uh, you're no longer freezing up. So actually, that'll be very helpful for a lot of people who might have yeah, not got it absolutely. earlier. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. So everybody who's watching the best thing you can do right now, if anybody's asking you how to help, you're explaining the situation in Tigray, the best thing you can do is um, uh, direct them to Linktree dash. I stand with Tigray. And there you'll find a whole number of action items in terms of Omna Tigray advocacy and resource. This is going to be the, uh, the it's somewhat newer, uh, basically platform that is internationalized and it has a lot of different historical um, uh, content to it, but it's a lot of different collaborative uh, Tagaro working on that site. And also second down, we have Stand with Tigray tweet templates. This is going to be imperative for all of us, um, especially within the current marketing um, expectations that we have for our collective, uh, collective. So Biden's 100 days, we have this week, week long campaign where you can join in and it's as easy as clicking a button. All you have to do is click, 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 click buttons, set up a Twitter account and it'll it has the pre-made text in for you. Um, you can also copy and paste if there's any technical difficulties, everything on the site is already laid out for you. So we really, really need anybody anybody willing to help out to raise your voice on those platforms because um that is a great way to do it 
Um, and then I stand with Degray Google Drive, third one down. That'll be the informational side, right? So you can get an introspective look on um, the last two years. What has led to this point in terms of the Cold War that has been stocked up? Uh, if you're looking at it from that perspective, sure, we can go up 27, 50, 100 years back. Um, and then also the phone banking guide, that's really, really important because that gives you the access and the know-how to speak with elected officials, right? So not only do you have their numbers, their names, and their direct lines, but you have a written out script on what to say to them. What are the demands? Um, what are we expecting from our elected officials? And this R2P, the ICC campaign, what can we actually expect? So um, there you'll find really great guidelines to do that as well. Um, petitions, um, GoFundMes, CDA GoFundMes, professional help. Like, so that is number one going to be, oh, there's loading. That is number one going to be like the best uh, source to find. Um, it says we're having trouble connecting. This is off. Yep, you back, you're back on now. Um, oops. So I think we'll bring her back, but um, connectivity, I apologize, guys. We appreciate you joining us today. Obviously, uh, we had a lot to cover, but given the audio connectivity, I'm going to invite Abby again. There we go. You're back. Hi, there dear. we go. Where did we leave off at? Um, I just let them know that I appreciated that we have an audio connectivity issue, but that you'll be invited again soon, and you just showed up right there. Okay, great. So what is the last thing I said? Uh, so about the campaign, like, you know, you just finished off, like, re, uh, re-explaining basically that how they need to follow through and, and write um, their, like, representatives and whatnot. So everything that you cover is how to stay like connected, how to stay engaged in their communities and our communities, wherever we are. Okay, great. I just wanna make sure that I got some of that in. I wasn't sure where I cut off at. Um, so yeah, I just wanna reiterate um, linktree dash I stand with Tigray. There you'll find our whole, um, and I encourage you to copy and paste that too and put it in your bio, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, anything um, to, to direct people. Anytime you have a conversation with somebody at Starbucks or wherever you're out in America, just take that opportunity to be like, hey, by the way, I know that a lot is going on right now, but I'd really appreciate it if you um, are informed about X, Y, and Z happening in Tigray, Ethiopia. And if you approach it that way, I promise you, people will engage. Whether or not you have a mask on your face, um, if you can approach it in a way that is like uh, uh, em almost embracive, just be like, hi, I don't know you, but um, this is what's happening. I would really care a lot if you know about this. The worst they can do is put your flyer on the ground or not really care at all. Um, but also, the best thing that can happen is like somebody actually does care and they have a connection somewhere that you can't even um, predict. So j don't stop. Don't stop losing hope and don't stop reaching um, for individuals that could help us. And, and we are, so we are just broadcasting, just so everyone knows, uh, this is not limited to the US. So those of you around the globe who are following us, who follow uh, Cyber Power of Tigra on YouTube and Facebook, uh, this information that Abby is discussing about sharing, please do the same thing no matter what part of the world that you are at. Uh, we are proud of you. We are proud of the young Tagaru who are rising stars of tomorrow. Tigray has a bright future ahead of us. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough as Tigray. So uh, I am going to once again uh, give Abby one more chance to do a uh, 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 you know, uh, anything that is encouraging uh, that you've been doing to those who can do Twitters and all these social platforms. But we have also many, uh, including the diaspora, who quite don't have the ability and the means to do the um, social media and whatnot. But uh, the encourage encouragement that, that we need, particularly those in Ethiopia, Mm -hmm. And throughout Addis Ababa and other region who are suffering mm -hmm. on the hands of a, 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 dictator, a dictator regime, uh, 
would you like to say anything for them in support and those at the in Sudan and wherever they are displaced on going through difficulties? Right, yeah. Um, all I can really say to our displaced brothers and sisters, our family and friends is that, um, you know, there's not a day that goes by that we do not think of you, that we're not with you. Um, we're with you every moment and we are detailing everything that is happening. We're writing everything down and we're taking every single uh, aspect of Western education um, in our back pocket to to really um, to propel our people. Like I said in the beginning of this conversation, we had longstanding plans to build up to Gray, even more than it was, right? Um, we've had plans to go back there and to do more. Um, so it just, it, it, trust in God before anything else, trust in God, trust in God's plan, whatever faith you adhere to. I really want you and encourage you to get closer to God and understand um, what, what is truth? What is our uh, moral compass? And to recalibrate um, and to figure what out. Those, sorry. What about to those who, you know, obviously we have various religions. I want to be respectful of everybody when we say right. God. So I want to make sure that they're not uh, misunderstanding us. But uh, aside from uh, the faith, you know, they feel hopeless. They feel defenseless. Yeah. Um, and, and if they don't follow faith, you know, what could they follow? What can they follow? Um, well, that's a that's a great question. And when I speak to faith, I try to be inclusive as possible and to acknowledge all faiths, right? Whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, whether you um, uh, are uh, adhere to Judaism, whether you, uh, you know, you're Buddhist, whether like, I don't discriminate and I make space for everybody, everybody who um, has the same values as me, like human beings, right? Um, so that's what I say when I when I say God. I want to make space for everybody. Um, and if faith is not your thing, then I just say like, understand what indigenous rights mean, indigenous people, on how uh, important they are to the world, to the planet, um, to life itself. And um, you know, I hope that we can create community for everybody, everybody who resonates as Tagore. Um, we've like in clubhouse we've had we've been having so many different conversations in the diaspora so i'm just like it's coming to my mind but um yeah I'm throwing I just, in there people are commenting about by the what they're saying to you i don't know if you can see the screen she said exactly sweet thank you love <laughs> thank you i don't know if she's older or not i'm gonna say hasty um <laughs> Um, but thank you so much. Um, I appreciate the support and I hope that, you know, uh, I'm coming from a place of love and uh, the utmost respect for all of our uh, elders and everybody who sacrificed for us uh, to get to this point. And this is a continuation of our fight and it's unfortunate, but um, just know there's so much that we can do together. Just stay united. Don't uh, cut anybody out. Uh, you know, we're in this together. If you're Tagraiway, you're you're Tagraiway. Like just, just um, love on each other and figure out how to cope together because we're all we have at this point. Um, and you know, don't exit anybody out. Just, just love on each other. Do the best that you can and regroup. I can't emphasize that enough. Take your time and regroup. Come back to the group and say, hey, where are we at? Figure out where you can help. Some younger men are so gung-ho to go back and fight, but are you really prepared for that? Figure out if that's the best space for you. Do you have uh, tech knowledge? Do you have other ways that you can really facilitate us here? Because what we need is uh, tech entrepreneurs. What we need is people uh, programming in Silicon Valley. We don't need more fighters. We need um, different type of constituents on, and I don't wanna speak too publicly about this because that's more strategic things that we can get into uh, at a different time, but uh, really figure out what is the best way to advocate for your people, whether it's translation. There's so many uh, translation teams that we needed, that we need. 
So whether you're, you speak Amharic, you speak Tigrinya and English, you're so useful to us. Uh, you can help so many people. Whether you are a writer, you can consolidate uh, media literacy. You have to know that as a journalist. So you have media literacy and digital literacy that a lot of people don't have, utilize that. Um, what else can you do? You can just be a comfort to your family. Say your mother has been, this is her second, third time. Be there for her, make coffee for her, uh, give love to her, spend time with her, hear her out. That is like so much, that's like generations what you could do for our women. Um, also men, men specifically speak out against the rape, speak out against this pillaging and like commit to like just stop all this patriarchal like really harmful things that happen to our women and have been happening uh whether it be domestic violence whether it be rape whether it be all of these things that are catastrophic uh, uh on this uh just mechanism on this hierarchy i mean um so let's let's all be bold let's all be bold and trying to figure out where our activism lies and where we can create the most impact those are just a few suggestions, but not limited to. Wonderful, thank you. Well, um, so I'm gonna do a quick, uh, both English and Tigrinya. So I appreciate, uh, Abby, I appreciate you coming and uh, we'll do uh, uh, another set of a round to uh, uh, share with our folks, our listeners, our viewers around the world. Thank you so much for joining us with uh, Cyber of, uh, Cyber Power of Tigray. Uh, this means a lot. Obviously, we are gonna continue the fight. Uh, Today, January 16, 2021, is the first day of the campaign that we have started with uh, Twitter. So please hop onto Twitter. Even if you don't feel tweeting, just hop on there, retweet any tweets that you see regarding Tigray genocide, Tigray stop war on Tigray, and, and list of things that you'll find there. We will mm -hmm. continue this until January 23rd. And uh, Cindy Australia, Seattle, Washington, and Minnesota are going to uh, staying put and protesting on January 22nd, 2021, which is coming up pretty soon. Uh, initially, that was going to be a worldwide protest that we had planned. But given what happened in at the Capitol Hill last week, uh, there's been uh, intense security around the U.S. So therefore, uh, our leadership in Washington, the Tigray community, who um, helps us to mobilize and organize around the globe, uh, in cons consultation with the young and everyone else around the world have agreed to postpone it. But uh, a few of the cities, like I mentioned, Sydney, Australia, Seattle, Washington, and uh, uh, Minnesota have decided to stay as planned because they already had a plan too far into it. So they like to do it then. And then they're going to do another one the same time as going to be worldwide on January 28th. So if you're in Sydney, Australia or nearby, Join them, please. If you are around Seattle, Washington, instead of Oregon, uh, British Columbia, if you can join the Seattle March in Seattle, Washington, January 22nd, 10 a.m. Uh, I'm going to try to make it there. I'm, you know, uh, six, seven hours away driving, so I'm going to see. But please if do you first and second also, and keep in mind, you know, just be, uh, stay up on the news because there's also things, uh, speaking specifically to America, Stay up on the news, exactly what's happening at the capitals before you yeah. march out there, especially with your flags, because we do need to um, uh, understand that, you know, white supremacist ideology, you know. That's right. That's right. So with that. That hates what we yeah. are. So uh, especially let alone a communist flag, like that is like their recipe for they hate, they hate it. Um, so just be prepared, you know, don't be fearful, but just be prepared that like, um, anything near the inauguration that that's is right. that's what you'll meet that's what those are the type of people that will be outside the capitol so just be so. so with that um for tagars around the world i know this has been like very challenging i know this has been the most difficult time in our lifetime in our generation uh even though we have seen war in the past we have i have never seen experienced this magnitude of massacre direct attack on civilians incidents do happen but this is no incident. This is no mistake. Abiy Ahmed of Ethiopia, who is an elected leader, he says a fork of Eritrea, who is a dictator, have unleashed every weapon they have at their disposal. They have gone after people who are in their 90s. A person who was a fighter and who was blind 
was murdered and used as a propaganda machine. As we speak, mm -hmm. the Ethiopian federal police and the military are planning in people's homes, weapons, money, then they'll bring the media for documentary, fake documentary to make it look like these are Tagar thieves, Tagar leaders and whatnot. And yeah. insinuating they stole money, they had weapons in their home to use that against them. That's what happened in the 60s when the FBI went after the Black Panther Party in the United States of America. That right. was in the 60s, in the 50s and 60s. Today, mm -hmm. this, this is happening, except it's worse than that. What's happening in Ethiopia today, in the Tigray region of Ethiopia today, should never happen. It is, it is ridiculous that 73 days later, we are still talking about it. So I'm going to switch to Tigray now. And to my Tigray now speaking folks around the world, Ayona. Nana, Tagaru, Ainin Bakahanina. Salatina, Ifukuru, Zarawai Khodiyam. Malisam Gun, Malhasam Yam Zanakso. Malisam, Maria Tigray, Moto in Kwanai Fultuwa. Hazim Tahon Hazi made at Tigray. Nuru, Bigidata, Nizaz Hazuwam. Arakto Sawat, the Kunstio, the Kunsti Hotana, the Defruans alone. Eh, Ertrawan Watader, I tip out Tader, Nam Hara, the Defora's alone, the Kunsti Hotana. Is you Behigawi, Kamegarna Hena Hamnefedi, Behigaw Gerna, and Mulusaina. While an atom, eh, Hamanaga Sarah Zeko and the Kunsti Hara and the Kunsti Artra, the Tom, the Gosu ones alone, the Defruans alone, the Kunsti Hotana. Tarik. Morana, Stunkfu was a low, Nitigrai his V, Moral Moral Hamegar now Dirna, Hamzash and Nefna and Massil Ilu, Mashrafat Abi Hamed, the Gorazalo, Junta Zelanazalo, Tijunta Malat Turgum and Hotara di Mohat, Junta Malat Abi Hamedi, Junta Malat, Isasa Fork you, Junta Malat, Naisasa Forkana, Abi Hamad Korahor, Korahor Malat, Zemar Hantenegazi Felity, the Lazio, Nana Togaru. Kab Kadamna, Kavayatana, the Halafena, Hadarantalo, Hade Tagara like Suankalo, Kali Tagara is the Kam. Hade Halafi, Tantalo, Mautentalo, Suankal, and so we Haki, Kali Halafi, Kali Halafa is Metz. The Zomdurishan is a low Hatana, Hamanisi Masfin. Kalatim, Hamanagar to Sorry is in here. Avi Ahmed as Gir was in Hinagas or Hanuha, not to Taraham to Hoven. كتر <تصفيق> نتقرأين المحاضرة نتقرأين نقول الله نعندر الله نحضر الله نقول الله نصحواتنا دك أرسيا دك تعطيا تحاوفنا ننور الله هاجر نعيتقار وهاجر يو كالي ترقم يولر أم حارة بزمس أنسا بسنة سرعة سلام زمس أنا حارة انتلي بسلام انكبان خلينا بحيد خمس دفة زقل جيل قانا انتهي رقت أطر لمريت حاموخشينا نقوره هرتراويا سكاو لمي تقور وزر لخم نامس أخم سلام أصف تحقزنا زر لخم صحو وزر لهم تزارع وزر لهم يا هنيلنا أنتم حد حدا ما تحد حد تم ارتراويا ناي إساسا سافوركي أم بقنا انتقادات الخور أخر وصحاو حكنا تلبخم تيجو شكلاتكم سرياتكم أساريو كم جيت شحن على تقرأي ارتراويا تقرأي أم نور سدتنيا حيز إز بس هذا سلو حيز إز قت هذا سلو لك أنا سير ترأون إذا فرع سلو أتقرأي كل ارتراويا مسيام تفوتوا هم بعلقوا كن ده جنزة ونصدركم مع عت إرتراوي أنا أفتكره إذا نور بسلام نيرم مثلاً أقول نقولنا بموسوان تك أريد حاوسنا بسلام زنور زنور إرتراوي أنا كميت شن لعلي سدت النهات سدت النهات يكون دجنا بسلام أو قينم أفتكره مل زنور نور بسلام يبصا وسيم زلوا بمن بيسياس بيسياس عندنا بناتو خورا خور ناي 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 إرتراوي تادر أفتكره إذا نهي ناي إرتراوي تادر أيقونه ناي سياس وتادر يو تزيو لي خطفلا لي ولكم so those you for a whole to the Mirta and Zulakum Zalho, Kablu Bum Zainas Arakum, Nisa has to 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 cut Katalu, Kora Horikum, Zena Ahomikum. Tena Ahom Hakmot Hoinkum, Zalho Mosulafogada. I've hacked nothing Hakuradikum in his again, 
حزب تغراي حزب ايرتران كساقنتلو نحاتكم زي ساقزلو زي اللي بتلقيكم زي حقنا تلقيكم ايرتراويان كن طب حق زلكم يقني لنا الى لقيه زين الساعاتنا حقنا زي تفوت ايرتراويان كن من انتكم درسعكم يخو ተግራይ <laughs> ተጋሩ <laughs> ኣብ ጎኑ ኹሚና ኣየኹም ስካብ ቀጻለ ግዜ ንራኸብ ብሩኽ ማዓልቲ ብሩኽ ለይቲ ሰዓት ሸዓተ ቢናይ ወስት ኮስት ታይም ደማ ክንምለሲና ስካብ ሽዕ ንራኸብ ደሓንኩ ነሕዋት ያቕን የለይ ኣቢ ቴንክ ዩ ዘሓፈ ያቕን የለይ አይ ሎቭ ዩ ኦል ቴንክ ዩ ቴንክ ዩ